the spirit of fighting transcends sport itself. It's a hunger that permeates every gym. Sweats on every mat. And bleeds on every canvas. For the warriors who pursue this sport, it is a spirit that haunts them. They will do whatever it takes to defend that spirit. But in the end, it can transform them from walk-on to icon, from notorious brawler to global superstar. These two gladiators will stop at nothing as they guide 16 men with their own pursuit. Some hungry for their first shot at glory, others hoping for redemption on the biggest of stages. To get there, they must endure a grueling gauntlet. Don't let him breathe! Where their spirit will be tested. For in order to be something, they must give it everything. Non stop! You will not run! It is the ultimate test. Fight on. But they demand to be tested. Let it go! Yes! Because glory awaits them. Yes! You Keep working! Keep working! They demand to be the next ultimate fighter. a big season, tough 31. I'm here to give back to the game, give back to the sport, and immerse myself, just be around, be surrounded by this. Chandler is the opposition coach, and we're set to fight. The biggest icon in mixed martial arts history walks into the gym, dressed to the nines, typical Conor McGregor walk. Most guys start to crumble, right? What's up, Mike? Hey. But I think I'm a scary fight for Conor. So my, yeah, see you, I'd probably be the last guy that I would come back and say yes to, but he did. I give you props and respect. I was like, hardest fight you can come back and take. Yeah, I'm actually really looking forward to a proper fight. Be careful what you wish for, right? Michael is not on my level. What was the Mystic, the Mystic Mike prediction? Second round KO. Deep dream, bro. Deep dream. Hit you with the hard ones <laughs> in the first. If I told you what way it's going to be, 185. You want to do 185, <laughs> I'll do 185. <laughs> You'll do what you're told. I'm going to pin you. This is my game. This is my game forever. Welcome to UFC Apex. This is a great season of The Ultimate Fighter, and we have vets versus prospects. So for some of you, this is an opportunity to make your way into the UFC. For others, it's an opportunity for you to get back into the UFC. Every season, we try to bring in the best coaches with the most knowledge and guys who can really take you to another level, not just as far as your training, but mentally, physically, emotionally, the business side, all of it. You know, you're looking at two guys here, and, and, and Michael and Connor, who have fought in multiple organizations, held world titles, been in big fights. They've done it all, they've seen it all, and at this point right here, right now, we couldn't have two better guys to come in and coach you guys. These guys both love to win. And I think you're going to get a lot out of this, whether you're a prospect or a vet. When it comes to sports, period, ah! Conor McGregor is one of the biggest superstars. Ever since we signed him back in 2013, the guy has just been on a rocket ship to the top. In a little over three years, he became the first fighter to ever hold belts in two different weight classes at the same time, in both featherweight and the lightweight division. 
Connor has headlined four out of the five biggest pay-per-view events in UFC history. The guy is not just a fighter at this point. He is a global phenomenon. In his last fight against Dustin Poirier, oh, you gotta be kidding me. he sustained a nasty leg injury. So he has been sidelined for about two years now. But now that he's ready to make his big return, there is nobody better to face coming off the last two years than Michael Chandler. Michael Chandler is as badass as they come. He's a very experienced vet with over 30 pro fights. He's all business when he steps into the octagon. Ever since we signed him in 2021, he has been willing to fight anyone, anytime, anywhere. He stands toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody he's in there with, and every one of his fights are electrifying. Out cold! That'll do it, Michael Chandler! When it's all said and done, these two are going to face off in what is sure to be one of the biggest fights in UFC history. Here's how it's going to go. I need vets to the right, prospects to the left. All right, coaches, bring in your assistant coaches. What's up, guys? What's up, boys? How are you? What's up, bud? All right, so we have you guys divided into 135 vets and 155 vets. Over here is 135 prospects and 155 prospects. I'm going to flip the coin. Blue is Conor McGregor. Red is Michael Chandler. So whoever wins the coin toss gets the first pick. And whichever coach gets the first pick, let's say they pick the 135 division first. I want the 135 vets. All the vets go to that coach. Then the rest of the 135s go to the other coach. Then he will get the next pick, whether he wants vets or prospects. The winning coach gets to make the first pick. So Connor wins the coin toss. Connor, you get the pick. Prospects 55. Let's go, let's go, lads. You're the new breed. You're the new breed. The old breed as well, brother. What's up? Welcome, welcome. I picked the prospect lightweights because vets have been here, done it. I'm confident in the young guns. All right, Mike, so you automatically get the 155-pound UFC veterans. All right, guys, come on over here to your coach. The veterans essentially have been at the bottom and they've been written off and now we get the opportunity i get the opportunity to coach them to become the ultimate fighter and that's what excites me all right now mike you get to pick 35 vets or prospects which one do you want you guys are all talented but i'm doing 135 vets prospects against vets let's go boys young blood yeah we're those yeah, 100 welcome nice welcome let's okay. go well, nice to meet you man nice to meet you man yes let's yeah. go bro. let's go young blood we got some young guns hungry to get there. We got some disgruntled vets that want to get back there. And we're going to put them together and see who really wants to be here. So, congratulations on your teams. Tomorrow, your coaches are going to take you back. They're going to put you through a training session. They're going to evaluate you. After they do, they're going to rank you one through four. Then, one will fight four, two will fight three in each category. We'll do a coin toss and see which coach controls who fights when, all right? So there's many things that I love about this competition. Number one, it does what it was designed to do. The best always rise to the top. This competition has produced world champions, hundreds of stars, men and women who have broken into the top five, the top ten. This is a life-changing opportunity for you. You have two badass coaches that are going to help you get through this thing. Gentlemen. Welcome to the Ultimate Fighter. Good luck. As it turns out, McGregor ends up with all the prospects on his team while Chandler will be coaching all the UFC veterans. So not only is this competition the start of Conor's big comeback, which everyone is excited about, but he and Michael are going to be coaching two groups of fighters that are hungry and ready to put it all on the line for different reasons. So this is going to be a fun season and... It should be epic. Young blood, it's mint. You know what I mean? It's all the way across the board. 155, 155, young blood. Let's go. So go out and show them what's what. 
for some of you guys, you may have been through things like this. Some of you guys have been, been to the big show. This is the greatest second chance that you ever could have asked for. And for some of you guys, it's the greatest opportunity of your life. All right? And we get to do that. I'm proud to be a part of it with you guys. So, let's do it, boys. Young Bloods against the veterans. It's going to be an exciting season. These are all great fighters, and I'm, I'm happy where it's at to go on. So let's see what it's about. Is it their time, or is it still user time? We're looking for dogs in that cage. Like we were saying, greatest moment of opportunity for some of you guys, and the greatest second chance you ever could have asked for. Yeah, let's give the public what they want. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Look at that shit chat. You got me and Connor getting on each other's nerves and competing against each other every single day, every single moment. <laughs> so, at any given moment, this whole thing could explode and blood could boil over. We want action. That's what we want. That's what we said. All that other means Machine nothing gun. except in there. Sparks are going to be flying, and it's going to be iron clashing against iron for 12 weeks straight. You know what I mean? It's a new time. It's not, it's not, it's not what it was. It's what it is. Absolutely. So I went and showed them that, right? Which is all. That's all we're looking for dogs here in this cage, yeah? Season, the fighters are going to be living in the house, away from their families, away from their friends. Oh, yeah. And with the house being full of UFC veterans and prospects all under the same roof, as always, I expect things to get a little crazy between the teams. Yeah, I want to yeah. get going. Let's get it. I got it. That's mine. This is it, baby. What a roof. We doing this. We doing this. Let's go. Walking out of the van and into this house is just crazy. This house is super decked out. Anything you can think of is here. And like, I don't come from a whole lot, you know? So it doesn't take a lot to have me being happy. Hell yeah. All the sauna. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yo. The house is huge, man. It's a, it's a really cool house. They have a pool. They have a basketball court, pool table. So they have everything we need to have fun. Got a pool table, all that good the best part is that we have two opposing teams. Yeah, we're working on it. We have the UFC veterans versus uh, prospects versus people who have who are right at the cusp. We got the dug. The styles are just so different, and the energy and the experience is so is so great that it's going to be very entertaining. Look at what they got here for us. Proper twelve. Proper twelve. Proper hey, 12. proper twelve. They even got the Irish apple. The Irish Ooh. apple. The proper twelve. Wait, look at this. Yo. You know what the f going on. <laughs> I don't think I would have a problem with anybody on the prospects team. All of these guys has already been sized up. I've already done research on most of them. To me, these guys are rookies. I don't overlook anybody. I'm just confident in what I can do. I'm confident in my skills. I'm confident in my experience. And these guys don't have that yet. I think that I finished all these guys in the first round. I'm so happy to exactly. be on this team because realistically, like short period of time, let's be realistic, like you can't change as a fighter over a week or two of this oil. You have to like, uh -huh. you have to be able to, you can pick some things, you can work on a couple things and you can implement it if you can, if you're that good, you know what I mean? And I think Connor's style, dude, for me will like make me dangerous, dude. It's like, gonna be dope, bro. I like just being around that aura, bro. The yeah. energy, bro. The yeah. energy of a winner, bro. He's just like, he's done things that nobody else has done. So, like, just being around that is going to be a big deal. Before the first round of fights are set, the coaches are going to run the guys through some training, evaluate them, then they're going to rank each fighter on their team, based on those rankings, the first eight matchups will fall into place. What's up, boys? Go! Let's get it. Michael Chandler, he's got great energy. His positivity resonates with the team. We got the exact team that we wanted, because you guys got the dog inside of you. For assistant coaches, I'm trying to build a dream team, so I brought in Ryan Bader. Yeah, everybody needs to be ready to fight first week because he's been through this process before he won the ultimate fighter fought in the ufc 20 fights we have robert drysdale multiple time jiu-jitsu world champion has coached world champions he's awesome and we got jason strout my striking coach who i train with every single day so i've got a group of guys who are just absolutely awesome and we have to coach these guys 
So let's just get some shadow boxing in, start getting the heart rate up. Footwork, fake shot. You gotta remember, you guys are dogs. Today we just kind of put him through a little uh, ground striking, all aspects of mixed martial arts. You guys are the veterans. You guys are the guys that have been there before. Pressure, relentless, in their face, foot on the gas. We're gonna get after, we're gonna train. Our rankings, our number one might not be our quote unquote number one. Our number four definitely might not be our worst guy. You gotta go stay on the side. I love veterans because there's a humility that, that comes with them that I resonate really, really well with. I'm Connor's teammate, train at his gym in Ireland. My teammates may wonder where my allegiance lies. In all honesty, my allegiance lies with Brad Katona. I'm a gangster and it doesn't matter what team I'm on, I, I'm going to bring it. Keep it on a little tighter, right? On the right? Brad, he's won this competition before the Ultimate Fighter. And now, the Ultimate Fighter featherweight winner, Brad Superman Katona! Yeah. He's from SBG, yeah, he trains with Connor and those guys. Yeah, maybe he wants to be with those guys, but hey, this is just how this thing works out, right? Hands up, see the punches coming. Short time, short time. They know that they're getting 100% effort out of me as a coach, my coaching staff. Time, bring it in. We're gonna win this thing. Hey, good work, boys. Good work, boys. What's up, lads? Yeah. How you Happy first day of training. First training session. You know, they hold up the anxiety. They've seen their potential opponents. You know, we've become a team. So, today's the first day of training. We're going to put on the big gloves, big uh, the shin pads, head guard, gum shield, and we're going to do some sparring. And uh, we got straight to it. Let's go. Round one. Off we go. They're in the fight. We've got a stretch now for a couple of days before a fight. Let's put them through it. Let's put them through their faces. Let's get that energy out of them. Let's introduce them to each other. As soon as he got in there, he put us up spar hard. Go, 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 go. It was a big shot to the system, but um, it was a good way to get started and get moving and get the bodies adjusted to being in a fight again. Steady on, keep going. Connor motivated us to start off with, and then he, he actually gloved up himself. So not only is he talking the talk, he's leading while uh, showing us how it's done. It was a real feeling of a fight, you know, where you don't know anyone, you never trained with them, and you just get straight to it. Keep control that breath. That's it. That's it. Ah. Nice job. You know, I really think he's passionate about this whole opportunity for us, and he's really trying to win this competition, have us win. That's it. That's it. Restart. I brought my coaching staff, my team that's been with me all the way. My head coach, John, has been with me from the very beginning. My coach, Roddy, as well. I got from my boxing coach, Phil, getting the best advice and guidance. That's great, great, guys. Good takedown. Great walk, time, guys. Great walk, lads. Very happy, very impressed with the with the walk rate and the effort. So we're happy. We're in a good standing here. The first practices are over, and now comes the fun part. Connor and Michael rank the four fighters in their team in each weight class. Then for the matchups, one will fight four, and two will fight three in each class. We had a coin toss, which Chandler won. So. He'll pick the first matchup, but since he has no idea how Connor is ranking his fighters, all he can really do is decide who on his team wants to fight first. So this should actually be interesting. All right, our first pick, we're going 155, number three, Roosevelt Roberts. Roosevelt Roberts. His mixture of talent and toughness might be the best in our entire group. That's my number two, Nate. Walking up there and then that face off. Here we go. Force fight over the show. Let's see what it's about. Just the heart rate going. It's fight time, baby. Here we go, my, my number two, Bantamweight Trevor. That means it's my number three, Bantamweight Tim Earth. Next, we're going 155, number two, 
Austin Hubbard. He fights my number three, Aaron. I'll go my number one, Bantamweight, Mando. And this is my number four, Bantamweight, Cody Gibson. Well, the coaches noticed that I'm a serious threat to win this whole competition, so I'm ready to go out there and prove them right. All right, next we're going 135, veteran, number two, Brad Katona. My number three, Carlos. Go, baby. Good fight, this one. Good fight. Very good. Oh, yeah. I'll go my one lightweight Lee. He's a teammate of mine many, many years. He's been training with me since he's a kid. He's got some great skills, and I'm looking forward to him showcasing them. It's our four lightweight, Kurt Hollibaugh. I don't know much about Lee. Go, Lee. But I know I looked him in the eyes today, and I stared right through his soul. He did not want to be standing there in front of me. I'm going 155 vet, number one, Jason Knight. My number four, lightweight, Landon. My coach looks at me, and I'm who he picked to win this thing. We're going to war, baby. I'm going to do everything in my power to prove him right. My four, bantamweight, Rico. Go, baby. Yes, sir. That means it's my number one, bantamweight, Hunter. Go. Let's go, Tim. Good luck. Here we go, gentlemen. We got the fights oh, lined up. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So, the first eight fights are set. And kicking things off is going to be Team Chandler's Roosevelt Roberts, who was a Contender Series alum with eight UFC fights under his belt, against prospect Nate Jennerman from Team McGregor. A great matchup to get things started. What you got, bro? You got a picture? I got my picture. Let's see it. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. I brought one picture of Mariah, Kanan, and Esme sitting in a little swing chair. So, oh, she's a baby baby. Yeah, she's six months. Oh, wow. Yeah. The hardest thing is just not having my wife and my, my kids here. I just, I just miss my family a lot. I like to be around them. It's a beautiful family you got there, kid. Thanks, man. Nice snowman, Kanan. Nate, you make really big snow angels. Sheboygan is the inland surf capital of the world. And we're driving down past North Point. We're hoping to see some surfers down here. I have a beautiful wife named Mariah. She's amazing. It's getting a little walk in down here. We have a three-year-old son named Kanan. Yeah. And we have a six-month-old daughter named Esme. Yeah. That's what you have to say. We have a three-legged dog at home. This is our little tripod. Gone. If you watch him run and play, you, you don't even know. I try to get as much time with my family as much as I can. I still work part-time right now. Um, I work preload at uh, UPS. It's about 4.30 in the morning, about to go clock in. It says seven degrees right now. Pretty chilly out there. My wife and I, we started our own gym in my hometown. So I, I'm there for kids jujitsu, adults jujitsu, and the adult kickboxing program. You know, I'm juggling a lot of things, but I go down and I train at uh, Rufus Sport headquarters in Milwaukee. I'm walking into the gym right now. <laughs> Man, I love Rufus Sport. Um, I've been with Rufus Sport since I was 19. Um, you know, I was a pissed off teenager. Um, my dad was an alcoholic. I, I just didn't want to be in the house. And uh, I found the gym and uh, the, the training, man, I fell in love with it right away. I had my first amateur fight while I was still in high school. I was like, yeah, this is, I want to do this. And then I had my first pro fight at 20, so. Nasty Nate Jennerman. I'm 16 and five with 13 submissions. That is all, Nate Jennerman. I have two titles for cage aggression. Jennerman, trying to finish it, he does. Then I fought for the LFA title fight. He's down. Lost myself mentally. That is all. Stepped away from fighting for two and a half years. I had some injuries that I just 
were lingering and I had to let heal up. When I came back from those years off, I moved up a weight class, I'm at 55 now. Been 3-0 and since I came back, three finishes. Gentlemen looking for a submission, and he's got it! Oh. I mean, I definitely feel like I have a chip on my shoulder um, for multiple reasons. One, like, I, I got a family at home. Like, I'm bringing milk money home. This is our last dinner together, <laughs> ever. She'll leave me while I'm in the tough house. <laughs> I make no promises. <laughs> it's just my time, and I've got that chip, and I'm ready to just wreck havoc. You just be writing, so you gonna give your girl something to read, or what? No, just writing to write. When I got cut out of the UFC. I got a book look just like that, actually. And then I filled that up with, like, everything I was going through from, like, that two years to two years. And, like, sometimes when I find myself down, I'll go back and I'll read some, some pages. And, like, I'll see, like, a little bit of progress that I had from what I was then yeah. or, like, to what I was now, you know? Man, when I first signed with UFC, I guess I just got lost in, like, not taking my career seriously. The fight is underway, bro. You know, I was basically fighting for the money and not really fighting for a career. But there it is, wow! My record in the UFC it was 4-4. Four four. The last fight was against Ignacio Bahamundes. That was a tough dude. He caught me and, you know, I got knocked out. I kind of already knew my UFC career at that point was done. That's unbelievable. Because the fight before that, I just got rocked early and then got submitted the first 35 seconds, you know, by a debut guy. I knew that wasn't good. And then just to come in this last fight of my contract and get knocked out like this, I kind of already knew it was old. And I should have just took it a little more seriously. I mean, when I, when I first got cut, you know, I was hella hard on myself. You know? Oh, me too. So a lot of times in the book, I was writing like my disappointment, how I felt about the people around me and how they looked at me, and, you know, yeah. or like just how I looked at myself. My last couple fights, I kind of lost faith in myself. I kind of lost the faith that I was supposed to be here. Sometimes you got to fall down. Sometimes you got to hit rock bottom. Rock bottom is a is a place where you start to recognize everything. And I just needed some time to get my mind right, to believe in myself again. And now that I'm here, you know, I feel great. Snap his head back. Oh, bang, make his nose bleed. Oh, bust his lip. Roosevelt, he's our number one guy for a reason. He's definitely one of our most strong guys, our most strong characters. When it comes to training, he is a yes sir, no sir, show up, get after it. Anything straight down the pipe, dude, you're gonna bang, 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 in and out, bang, bang, bang. He's here, he sees the opportunity that he has, and I trust him to put the work in. That's it. That's it. If I could tailor make an opponent for Roosevelt, it's Nate Jennerman. He is aggressive, but doesn't have a lot of great defense. And I don't think he's ever fought a guy who's got the power and the slickness and the speed and the timing of Roosevelt. And I think Roosevelt peppers him up big time in the first round. Nate's got a lot finished by guillotine, but I'm not looking to go take him down. I'm looking to go in there and put the pressure and, you know, really just put these hands on him, make him do something stupid, make him shoot a shot. You know, he's going to have to use his hands with me. He's going to have to show me that he can stand and bang, and I'm going to make him have to shoot. I visualize me hitting him hard as soon as the bell start with a quick one-two, stepping back, and then him coming in and walking right into that right hand. He's definitely overlooking me, for sure. And he probably definitely think that this is an easy one for him. You know, and that pisses me off. So, you know, in my eyes, I'm going in there and I'm knocking him out. Yes, I remember. Elton is over the bomb. 
Boom. Boom. Yes. Yeah. The way in that one. The way difference. Nate's a gentleman, a nice man, a family man, but he has a nasty side to him. His nickname is Nasty Nate. Oh, 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 yes, beautiful, beautiful. Put him down with that. So I'm trying to keep the reins on him and preserve that nastiness for the octagon. Feel the air go through your centre chest cavity. And now back to one, two. Just stretching the quad here. Nate's up against a long, tall guy in Roosevelt, and it's a good, a good belt between the two of them. Don't rush nothing. For what? Right. You know what I mean? Keep them where you yeah. want them. Yeah. And if I rush them, he's going to look to do the same thing I do. Yeah. So, yeah. When people rush on me, I'm not going to rush. I fancy Nate. I think he'll get in there and he'll put damage on him and make it ugly. So I'm excited to see it take place. Trust the shot, trust the right hand, guys. Roosevelt's one of the tallest 55ers out there. What makes Roosevelt so dangerous is he's real fast twitch. He's got a really snappy punch to the end of his jabs and his crosses, and he likes to throw his leg kick a lot as well. Yes. And aim for his nose, guys. Whatever his nose is, throw it. The game plan right now is to make sure that I'm not just leaving my head right in the middle when we're on the outside. Boom. Boom, hand, hand, hand. Boom, yes. And then avoiding that jab cross off the rip and getting inside. My coaches and I both think that if I get inside and can get to the clinch, we can make it real nasty from there and start throwing some elbows, body shots, some punches, and ultimately I can get the takedown. If I can get a front headlock position, it's over. Yes, that's the way I wanted. I'm going to be taking out Roosevelt Roberts for sure. Yeah, man. We got Chandler as a coach. Man, I'm really excited about that. I know, man. Me too. I ain't gonna lie, I like McGregor, but I just don't know if his style and his personality would fit with mine. So I think... I his think, definitely don't fit with mine. I can yeah, tell you that much. <laughs> I can click with Chandler. You know, Florida boy, I'm a Florida boy. We'll find a way to make it happen. But after the show, I'm moving back, though. That's the big show. Miami? I'm gonna go back, yeah. Me and my kid's mother split up. If she moved back, like, she lives in Florida, mm -hmm. not in Cali, so... It's time for me to go back, go back, be around the kids, feel you. you know. Hopefully after this show, man, I'm praying, I'm hoping that after the show, when I move back, I get to train with Chandler and them, like, yeah. full time. Hopefully, that's, that's the goal. That's what I want to happen, you know. We're going to see what happens. It's going to be nice. Welcome to the gym, adrenaline. Right now, we got to get you going on. Uh, we got the coach Mikey right here, my little protege. Right now I train out of Adrenaline Martial Arts at Carlson Gracie Jiu Jitsu. Got the boxing area, me and the coaches. My professional fight record is 12 and three. I would just say I'm a freestyle fighter and I'm pretty much good everywhere. I was small as a kid and people always make fun of me. I always had to prove my point. So fighting was always in me. I guess what brought me to mixed martial arts fighting was when I had my daughter. I just wanted to learn how to protect people, protect my daughter, protect my family. And I just went into a gym one day and I started sparring, boxing. And I just kind of just slowly started picking it up, picking it up, and I fell in love with it. Me and my dad didn't have the best relationship. You know, he, he was abusive. And then once I hit about like 13, 14, you know, I just kind of got caught up in all the drama inside the household, my mom, my dad. And, you know, I fell into the street life. I wish I could go back and take some things, like, and redo it. But all the stuff that happened in my life made me who I am today. It made me a better dad, that's for sure. You know, I never want my kids to look at me how I looked at my, my dad. Got the kids calling. Pick them up real quick. Is that a camera? This is a camera. You are a Oh, wait! My oldest is my girl, Mira. And then my youngest is Ashton. What's up, buddy? My kids are everything to me. You know, they they the reason I changed my life. Think I'm a good fighter? Yes! Yes! Do you guys think that I can win it? Yes! Before I had them, I was still out there doing crazy stuff, selling drugs, fighting, just losing myself. And the moment I had them, I had to change my life. You know I miss you guys, right? Yes! And you guys know that, you guys know that I'm doing this for you guys, right? 
I know that. You're that. doing it for us. They're the reasons why I get up now and I go train. They're the reasons why I got to believe in myself. Because one day they're going to have a dream. One day they're going to have a goal. One day they're going to wake up and they're going to look back on my life and they're going to be able to see that, you know, sometimes you're going to fail. Sometimes you're going to have setbacks, but you can never give up, you know. I'm confident that you're going to win one way or another. This is everything to me. This is going to help me change their life. This is going to help me change my life. And this is going to help me build their life. Gentlemen, welcome to the Ultimate Fighter 31, Chandler versus McGregor, weigh in. First fight, Roosevelt Roberts versus Nate Jennerman. First in scale, Roosevelt Roberts. I'm here at weigh-ins. Yeah, I don't know where Connor is. To me, the first weigh-in seemed like it was pretty, you know, important. I don't know what kind of message it sends to your team if you don't show up to weigh-ins. Make this official. So Roosevelt Roberts popped onto our radar around 2018. We signed him to a contract. He had a decent run of fights, but after back-to-back -back losses, we ended up releasing him. One fifty-six. I'm excited to see how he's evolved as a fighter since being away from the UFC, and I'm excited to see, you know, what he's going to do now that he's getting a second chance. Next to the scale, Nate Jennerman. Let's go, Nate. Let's go, Nate. That's Nate, baby. Let's go. Even though he's not fought in the UFC, Nate's got a lot of fights. He's a dangerous submission specialist, and he could be trouble if he manages to get on the inside. It should be a great fight to kick off the season. 155 and a half. Let's go. Let's go, Nate. Let's go. Let's go, Nate. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. Rowan Nate Gentleman, I think, is going to be a pretty good match stylistically. I think Roe will win two rounds to zero. He's tall, good striking, and Gentleman likes to come forward, and every time he comes forward, Roe's going to hit him. That's right, baby. Make him feel that energy. Nate has a very crafty submission game, very good guillotine. Roe's a tall, skinny guy. I feel like if Nate can make it a dirty fight, get in that clinch and get him down, I think that's his key to victory. Me being a UFC fighter, I lost myself, I lost my house, like, I can't go back down. I'm free from the burden of losing the contract, but I have my family, and I have my reasons. I have the things that I wronged that I have to right with this sport, and I'm willing to go in there, and I'm willing to die for this. This is the life we live, the life we chose, and I'm expecting a great fight from me. He's going to get two rounds of a savage, and he better bring that, because if he don't, it's going to be an easy night. I'm ready for a war. I'm ready to go in there and let these hands fly. Bang, bang. I right, really doesn't want to be starting this thing off. I know I'm a prospect in terms of the UFC. Obviously, Roosevelt Roberts has got some UFC fights under his belt. And honestly, I think the biggest experience difference for him versus me is fighting in the apex before. I've got more fights than Roosevelt Roberts. Experience-wise, I got that edge. I got that natural killer in me. The moment I see blood, I'm swarming. And this moment has been a long time coming. I think the head movement that we've been working on, I think I'm going to be able to avoid big shots on the outside. Yes, there we go. That's a beautiful shot. I don't think Roosevelt can handle me once I'm on the inside. Yes, beautiful. Get used to catching that jab. 
Boom. Hands up a little higher. Yeah. Boom. I'm excited to finally, like, really just put my name on the map right here. When this fight is over, you're going to see my hand getting raised. Let's go, baby. This is it. Starting off this entire thing. I want to fight. I want a war. I want to go in there and I want to prove that I belong in the UFC. And I want to go ahead and put on a great show. Let's go shine. This is no disrespect. This is no hate. But I'm coming for you, Nate. I know we're all chasing this dream, but I can't let you stop me. And I'm coming to knock your head off. Keep it tight. Keep it right, Rose. The moment I'm walking out to the fight, that's when like I just start feeling that calmness come on me, and at that point, it's just me and him, and one of us is coming out with a W. Let's go, Nate. That lead hand busy. Let's go, bro. Right out the gate, bro. Right out the gate. All right, hey, guys. This fight is two five-minute rounds. If after the second round we have a draw, we'll go to a third round, sudden victory. Winner of that round wins the fight. Roosevelt, ready? Let's go, Nate. Nate ready. Fight's on. Let's go. Watch the fingers. Stop, 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 stop. Let's go, baby. Let's go, baby. Red team, baby. Red team, baby. Ah. Yeah. Whoa, I'm okay. You out. Oh, no. He's out. You out. Red team, baby. Yeah. Congrats. I know I f***ed up my contract last time. Come back. All right. All right. Well, I told you. I'm a starving. Roosevelt went out and did exactly what we knew he could do and what we wanted him to do. He got his range, got his distance a little bit, and before you knew it, he hit him with a combination, dropped him with the right hand. The gentleman went down. A couple of hammer fists later, he gets pulled off. It was picture perfect, and he should be very, very proud of that performance. We were all upset for Nasty Nate. He didn't get to show much of what he has. It's a big stage, and sometimes we can rise. Sometimes it goes against you. In this one, that's essentially what happened. Roosevelt came out today and made a statement and made it quick. That was a fast fight. One of the fastest knockouts in tough history, for sure. A massive win for him. What this tells you is that these veterans realize this is the last shot to get into the UFC. So that was an impressive, badass start to the competition. Round one. We have a knockout. Let's go. Winner, moving on. Both belts. Let's go. 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 let us go the journey, the battles that I've been through, the obstacles, man, and just to go and make a statement like that felt amazing. Mr. Roberts, I'm a big fan of you. Come this well for me. I got you. <laughs> still all here with you, mate. Still all here with you, yeah? We get back to the gym. Sorry, back down, worry, Ryan. No, back to the gym. That's right. We get back down now. I feel like I left my kids behind for nothing right now. I feel like I didn't even get to fight. Like I just got clipped right off the rip and didn't even get to show myself out here. It's all right, brother. Listen to me. It's all right. Keep the head with me. Keep your head up, bro. Right now, I'm just kind of down on myself. We got a month to learn still, too. We still got a month of learning. It's only been still here to learn, Listen, bro. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta rip this off, throw it out, and onto the next. You can't, you can't sit in it. You know what I mean? You gotta, you gotta keep moving. Got your back, bro. Back to the gym, keep a wolf for real. When we get back to training, I'm just gonna take everything in that I can and I'm gonna come back better than I've ever been before. What message do you have for your friends and family back home? 
Love you guys, and I'm sorry. It's just one fight. On to the next. So, in the first quarterfinal fight, Chandler's number three lightweight, Roosevelt Roberts, defeated McGregor's second seed, Nate Jennerman. A solid win for UFC veterans. Next up, Dean McGregor's number two bantamweight, Trevor Wells, takes on Chandler's number three bantamweight, Timur Valiant. This was a great start to this competition. On this season of The Ultimate Fighter. It's the hardest tournament in sports, and it's kill or be killed. Yeah, it's over there while we sleep with you, you can run your mouth. I'm trying to win. Don't be trying to come in on some fight that's not your own. Don't let him breathe. Well, take these one off your mind, yeah? Right, yeah? I'll take these off your kid. This way I was going, yeah? <laughs> it's the oh, My emotions are still team blue. This is our chance. This is time for redemption. So it's a grade two MCL tear. <laughs> <laughs> hey, put me in there with your boy. I'll be a be team here today, going tomorrow, yeah? You've shown us a little bit of you that yes, everybody that. needs to hear. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yes, yes. Thank you. Y'all chasing the same dream. Hey. Keep working. Oh, it's beautiful. She got that horse up. That's it. Yeah. It's my time, and it's time for the young blood to take over. Maybe if you show up, I'll make your nose a little filly. Get out of my way. Get out of my way.